Welcome everyone to our very first real full biology unit all about ecology. So what is ecology? Ecology is the study of ecosystems. And when we study ecosystems, we can approach it in many ways. We can think about how organisms interact with each other. We can think about how organisms interact with non-living things in their environment. And we can think about how energy and elements move throughout the ecosystem. Ecosystems are full of both biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic means living, and abiotic means non-living. Anytime you see an A in front of a word, that means not, so non-living. In the a puzzle pop-up question, I'd like you to make a list of as many biotic and abiotic factors that you can think of. So here are some of the things that I would expect you to come up with on your list. Living things in an ecosystem include things like animals, plants, fungi, like this mushroom, and microscopic organisms like bacteria and protists, and also humans. Abiotic or the non-living factors include things like the amount of water or rainfall, how much sunlight they get, Things like the temperature and the seasons, the quality of the soil, the quality of the air, and different minerals available. And it also includes things like pollution caused by humans. So in our characteristics of life lesson, we discuss the different hierarchies and the different levels of organization in biology. So we're going to take a minute just to review the different levels that we are concerned with in ecology. And we're going to go from smallest to largest. So in ecology, we can study uh, the species, which is one individual living organism. The next level up is the population. And populations are made of organisms of all the same species living in an area. It's really important that they are all of the same species. So here in this picture, we have all of these little orange frogs that make up a population. Next, we have the community. The community is all of the populations in the area. Another way of thinking about this is all of the biotic factors in an area. So we have uh, the frogs, but then we add things like plants and these worms. And we could also include things like bacteria and fungi and larger animals that would all make up the community. So all of the living things in an area make up the community. Next, we have the ecosystem. If we take the community, the biotic community, and add in the abiotic factors like climate and water and sunlight, then we get the ecosystem. And finally, the largest level of organization in ecology is the biosphere. And this includes anywhere on the planet where life is found. And when we study the biosphere, we think about all these different ecosystems and how they impact each other. A vocabulary term that you will hear me use over and over again throughout this unit is niche. And niche is a species job within an ecosystem. And a species niche is determined both by biotic and abiotic factors. So for example, a species job is its position in a food chain. What does it eat and who eats it? Its habitat, where it lives, and how it impacts maybe other abiotic factors in the area. For example, um, a beaver building a dam, how it affects water flow. And then behaviors, 
So what the organism does. So if I use this bullfrog as an example, some of the biotic factors that help to contribute to the bullfrog's niche or the bullfrog's job is that it is a predator to insects and small fish. They are prey to birds like herons, raccoons, and mice. So these are referring to its position within a food chain. And it's abiotic factors that contribute to its niche is that they prefer to live in slow moving bodies of water. So all of these factors help determine a bullfrog's place in the ecosystem or its job or its niche. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be focusing on community interactions between organisms. Another way to think about this is to think about how a niche is determined by biotic factors. Part of a species niche is determined by symbiotic relationships with other organisms. And symbiosis is a long-term association or a relationship between organisms of different species. And there are four types of symbiotic relationships that we are going to talk about. Mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, and competition. The first is mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, both species benefit from the relationship. Both species help each other. And one example are bees and flowers. So the bee has benefited because it gets food from the flower in the form of nectar and pollen. Flowers benefit from the bees because flowers get pollinated. And this is how flowers reproduce. As the bee goes from flower to flower, it collects some pollen and some fa pollen falls off of its legs as it lands on a new flower. And the mixture of the pollen to the different flowers is how those flowers are going to be able to reproduce. The relationship between flowers and bees is so important. 35% of the world's food depends on bees, because without the bees, the plants that we use for our food won't be able to reproduce. And that means that they'll run out. And right now, many bee populations are threatened or endangered. So we need to do our best to protect the bees. In commensalism, one species is benefited and the other is neutral. One example is birds and trees. The birds are benefited because the birds get a place to build their nests and raise their offspring. But the trees don't really care that the bird is there. The bird isn't hurting the tree, nor is it really helping the tree. The bird just kind of sits there and the trees don't mind. Next is parasitism. In parasitism, one species is benefited and the other is harmed. So one example is mosquitoes and humans. Mosquitoes benefit because they like to eat our human blood. Humans are harmed because we get that itchy bug bite, that itchy rash, or even worse, we could get mosquito-borne disease like Tripoli or malaria. In fact, the world's most deadliest animal is the mosquito because most of the animal-caused deaths on the planet is are caused by mosquito-borne illness. Finally, we have competition. In competition, both species fight over the same resources. So they might fight over food, water, space, or sometimes individuals of the same species might compete for mates. 
And the example in the video here are some African wild dogs and a lion. Um, they are having a face-off for some food that the lion captured. And the wild dogs are trying to get a piece of that food and chase the lion away. For your exit ticket, please answer the question in the Edpuzzle pop-up box. There are many fungus species that live inside plant tissues. What determines whether the relationship between a fungus and a plant is commensalism, mutualism, or parasitism? A, where the fungus is located in the plant. B, how long the fungus survives in the plant. C, whether the fungus reproduces in the plant with spores, seeds, or runners, or D, whether the effect of the fungus on the plant is neutral, positive, or negative. Please select your answer in the Ed Pencil pop-up box.